and we're back. So this could very well be the second video I'm posting today. It all depends on which one I post first because uh, this is my second video that I made today. I was debating if I'm going to post them both on the same day or not, but this one definitely is going to be posted today at some point whenever you're watching this because of the uh, um, one of the two teams I'm talking about is playing tonight, so stats could change. But So after talking about my previous video that I did um, that should be posted before this or it might be after, I'm not sure yet, uh, is on the Toronto Maple Leafs. So if you haven't checked that out, if that's up already, then make sure you go check that out. Make sure you go check um, the video that I posted yesterday too on the current state of the Nashville Predators and everything before that because I had plenty of videos that um, really I'm trying to get myself out there. I had one video especially blow up in regarding the New York Rangers with Igor Shosturkin and I um, really don't want to narrow myself to just one audience though even though I am a Rangers fan. I do like talking about every team so that's what I'm going to continue to do. Um, that's what I said in previous videos and I'm going to stay true to that. Um, don't know if I'll necessarily deep dive into every team but I am going to be talking about a lot of teams um, as of right now and for this one especially I'm talking about two teams as you as you probably read from the title which team is better between the Calgary Flames and the Edmonton Oilers currently this season the Battle of Alberta you know it's obviously a rivalry that isn't as prominent as, as it used to be but it's a very historic one with a, a lot of great mem memories and um and could be some sad memories too depending on which side you're on but uh, I want to really deep dive into them because I thought there was some very interesting things with how the season has played out for both teams. So starting off, the Flames and the Edmonton Oilers are both identical in two columns, which is insane, in the win-loss, um, overtime loss point um, category. Calgary Flames and the Edmonton Oilers in 45 games played each have 23 wins, 17 losses, and 5 overtime losses. That is bizarre. The difference, though, is Calgary is in the second wild card spot in the um, in the Western Conference, while the Edmonton Oilers are currently sitting third in the Pacific Division of the Western Conference. So Edmonton isn't in that wild card spot, but they could easily get bumped out because there are teams like Vancouver um, lurking that if they get a win and say Edmonton loses tonight against Montreal, that would bump them out. But still, very impressive how how similar well really the same that's been for both teams and within their past 10 games played too they both have identical records of five wins four losses and one overtime loss that was another thing i found very interesting too um now let's start with the flames uh, i'm going to um, say some things about them so obviously if you if you've been following the flames at all you know that they fired their um uh previous head coach bill peters not too long ago with uh, the allegations that came out against him from Akeem Alou that seemed to be true from um, when he coached him in the uh, AHL years ago. I'm not going to get deep into that because you should be up to date on that by now, I'm assuming. But since then, um, Jeff Wolf is has been, I mean not Wolf, Jeff Ward has been their head coach. And since coming into place for them, they, ha they have a record of 17-11-5. So they have really resurrected their season after it seemed like everything was going wrong for them. And they have a very solid shot of making the playoffs as of now. But the, they have been definitely inconsistent like the Oilers. In a lot of ways, these teams are really the same. The only difference significantly is the type of star power that they have. So starting off with the Flames, let's talk about their point leaders. Um, first is Matthew Kachuk, who's a young phenom, is only going to continue to get better. One of the players that I really like the most in the league because he's an agitator, but he is a fantastic overall player. He will back up the the things he say, um, the actions that he does, even if a lot of people don't like him. He's a guy you love to hate and a guy you would love to have on your team. 38 points. Right behind him then is Johnny Hockey. Johnny Gaudreau with 35 points. Not at, on as nearly of good of a pace that he's been on in previous seasons, but um, that still isn't too much of a huge problem. It's also been with how the system has changed with the Flames especially with the, the type of coach that Ward has been for them. They have definitely shifted into a more defensive-minded team. So with that being said, that has affected um, Goudreau's point production in doing so. Third in point scoring for them is Elias Lindholm, and tied for third with him is, is Sean Lahan. They both have 34 points apiece, so they are still both doing well. I would expect a little bit more from Lahan 
because he had, I believe, um, at least a 90-point season last year. But um, Lindholm is still doing solid. And overall, they're, they're all still playing relatively well, just not as much of an offensive powerhouse that they were last season. Now, let's get into what happened with them. So yesterday, they extended Rasmus Anderson, who's one of their um, up-and-coming young defensemen, to a six-year deal over um, $27 million, I believe. And that seems like a decent deal on paper, but kind of curious what Calgary's thought process was behind it. He has a plus-minus of uh, minus 11. He, um, he doesn't even have 15 points. So he's not huge when it comes to point production and things like that, but neither is this current Calgary team. So hopefully for Anderson and the Flames, that contract works out well going forward and he continues to progress and become a better defenseman year after year. So besides that, then let's have the goaltending, right? Um, obviously, if you know anything, you know Cam Talbot, who was previously the goaltender for the New York Rangers, and then the Edmonton Oilers for numerous seasons and helped um, lead the charge with them when they last made the playoffs at Oilers in 2016. Talbot is now with the Calgary Flames, and he has been the backup for the Flames, but surprisingly hasn't been nearly as bad as what he was to start the season. In 14 games played, he has a record of um, 5 wins, 7 losses, a goals allowed average of 2.62, and a save percentage of 917. And within his past 10 games, he has been pretty solid. Um, he's won his last two games, then he, I believe he lost the previous two, and then before that he won um, last two. So really has been playing bad at all. Um, has definitely picked up the pace from having a really rough start to the season. And then David Riddick, who is their starter, who's had the brunt of the work so far with 33 games played, has 18 wins, 10 losses, and 5 overtime losses, a goals allowed average of 2.81, and a save percentage of 9.11. So really hasn't been that terrible either. Goaltending actually hasn't been the problem for this Flames team, which is surprising because going into the season, really seemed that way, and it seemed that um, this tandem wasn't going to work. But at least as of late and since Jeff Ward has become their head coach, they have been doing much better in that category. Even though Riddick has been not as good lately, it doesn't mean that he's going to be this way throughout the remainder of the season. Now let's get into some more statistics. They're 23rd in offense, which is a yikes. They only average uh, 2.78 goals per game, and their defense is the um, uh, ranked 12th. So their defense really hasn't been bad. They're averaging three goals allowed a game, but overall, they haven't been terrible. Their offense has been their ongoing problem throughout the season, and very similar to the Edmonton Oilers, they lack scoring depth. Once you get out of those top four guys I previously talked about, there is nothing there whatsoever. Backlund just has around 20 points for them. They have um, guys like Tobias Reeder in there with like seven points. Milan Lucic, not even 10. Guys that really shouldn't be in their lineup that are playing. Zach Ronaldo's been playing. Zach Ronaldo should not be even in the league, in my opinion. Um, and then you have Derek Ryan, who's fifth in scoring on the team with 22 points. Mark Giordano, only 20. So scoring is a huge problem for this Calgary Flames team, which definitely um, makes this harder to favor them between the two teams. But like I said, they are both neck and neck in regards to very similar in so many categories. Now let's talk about Edmonton. Their points leaders, this should be obvious. Um, Connor McDavid leading the way, best player in the league, will go down as arguably the best player in NHL history, in my opinion. He is absolutely fantastic. Night in and night out, he will win you games without question. Right behind him is Leon Dreisaitl. They are first and second in the league in point scoring. Uh, McDavid being first with 69. And Dreisaitl right behind him with 67. But then after that, there's a huge drop-off. And it goes all the way to Zach Cassian with only 28 points. That is a significant jump. A 50-point jump. No, not 50. I'm sorry. Wait, 70? 40. So it's still a lot. So overall, that is a big yikes too. And then you have guys like um, Ryan Nugent Hopkins with 26 points. Then you have James Neal with 27. And uh, Oscar Kleppbaum, who has had a fantastic season. Talked about him previously in other videos. Fantastic season for the Edmonton Oilers. 26 points really doing good on their special teams and all around. But their goaltending has been a bigger problem than what it's been for Calgary. Um, the tandem of Miko Koskinen and Mike Smith has really died down from having a strong start to the season. Koskinen in 26 games played has 14 wins, 8 losses, and 2 overtime losses, 2.85 goals against average, and a save percentage of 9-12. And then right behind him is Mike Smith with 23 uh, games played, 
nine wins, nine losses, three overtime losses, goals allowed average of 3.05, and a save percentage of 897. So that isn't looking too great either, which is, which really makes it difficult to pick between both teams which one's better. Then obviously, um, the Oilers have the 18th um, ranked offense in the league and the 18th ranked defense. So talk about um, being equal with each other. But their offense is interesting because they don't have the scoring depth, obviously, and that's something they desperately need. But their power play is the best in the league. They're tied for first in, in their power play percentage with the Tampa Bay Lightning at 28.99%. But their defense is where things are looking hazy, where Flames are more in favor. Um, the Flames only have... Uh, I'm sorry, the Edmonton Oilers only allow, um, are averaging 3.16 goals allowed per game versus Calgary at a solid three. So overall, the goaltending and the defense is definitely in favor of the Calgary Flames, which really makes it tough. So if I had to pick between these two teams, which one I think is better and has, say, more likelihood of making playoffs over another or just having a deeper run without any moves being made currently, just where, where their current rosters stand, between the two, I'm going to have to go with the Edmonton Oilers. And this is something that I really kind of feel iffy about because normally defense, the phrase defense wins championships and the goaltending, you need that. But if Koskinen and Smith get out of their slump that they've been in, I can see them having to run because Smith has had playoff experience. He knows what it takes to get there. Um, and overall, I think just the fact from Joyce Seidel and McDavid alone they're just so unmatched. And the way that this Flames offense has been one of the worst in the league, that is very worrisome for me. And at the end of the day, you can have a great defense, but if you can't have the goal scoring, then it's not going to get you anywhere. Whereas offense, you can at least score yourself out, even if you give up, say, three, four, five goals a game. They have the guys up front to do it, but obviously, in my opinion, they definitely need to make more moves if they want to have a chance at a deep playoff run. So both teams could very well make the playoffs. They are currently in a position to do so. But if I had a favor between one over the other, I have to go with Edmonton just because of McDavid and Dre Seidel alone. But if those two slow down, because um, they did slow down for a little bit in the season, if they slow down again, then that could very well be the worst thing possible for this Edmonton team. So I'm picking Edmonton over Calgary. Let me know what you think. If you think Calgary is say better than Edmonton and let me know why. This is just my opinion, what I think, where they currently stand, what's going to happen. Um, there are solid arguments for both sides, but I thought this would be a great idea because it's the Battle of Alberta, and they had the same record, the same record in the past 10 games, and very similar with their team in regards to depth scoring especially. So once again, thank you all so much. If you haven't checked out the previous videos I either posted today or the day before, or way back when I started, please go check them out so you find more about me, what this channel is about. It is all about the AHL, if you haven't noticed already. And yeah, I, I should be back tomorrow or within a couple of days. And that that's all I got. So thanks all so much for watching. Subscribe, drop, um, drop a like, comment, whatever, all that good stuff, whatever you want to do. And I'll be back in a little bit.